only 23% of the country saying that the US is heading in the right direction. The polling on that is, again, remarkable. Now, you mentioned uh, former US President Barack Obama. There he's weighed in on the conflict between Israel and Hamas, the man who enriched and emboldened Hamas's biggest backers, Iran, thinks yep. we're all complicit in what's happening now. Let's have a listen. What Hamas did was horrific, and there's no justification for it. And what is also true is that the, the occupation and what's happening to Palestinians is, is unbearable. Nobody's hands are clean. That all of us are complicit to some degree. Josh, the chutzpah there is uh, weapon grade. You know, let me try to translate roughly what you just heard Barack Obama say. A translation of that would be, you know, what Hitler did at Auschwitz and Treblinka was really bad, but, you know, he happened to own a dog, so he's probably not all that bad, right? I and mean, he actually probably had some nice quality. I and mean, that basically is what Barack Obama just said. You know, the Hamas Holocaust of October 7th, Rita, was the single deadliest day for the Jewish people since the death of Hitler and the defeat of Nazi Germany in 1945. It, it is a day that... For, for Israel, for the Jewish people, frankly, I would argue for the Western world's broader fight against radical Islamic terrorism it is a day that, to paraphrase FDR, will will live in infamy. And to kind of try to both sides this thing, you know, while the blood is still dry, while all mm. the bodies, while all the bodies in the kibbutzes near the border with Gaza have literally to this day not yet been fully identified because they were so grossly disfigured, the bones, the shrapnel, while, by the way, well over 200 hostages remain in the subterranean terror tunnels in Gaza, those Hamas-controlled terror tunnels, we think roughly 15 to 20, at least of those hostages, are American citizens. This is a former president of the United States. While there are, you know, 15, 20 American hostages currently being held in the worst American hostage crisis since, as you alluded to, the 1979 Tehran hostage crisis, have a former president get up there and try to both sides this thing, you know, it's nothing short of disgusting. But unfortunately for, you know, Barack Obama, it's par for the course. As you said, this is a man who filled the coffers of the world's number one leading state sponsor of jihadism. That, of course, is the head of the snake, the Iranian regime. This is someone who, whose entire Middle East geopolitics was based on undermining our allies, such as Israel, Saudi Arabia, UAE, and Egypt, and bolstering our enemies, such as Iran and the Muslim Brotherhood. It's horrific, horrific stuff. He obviously should know better. I mean, based on, you know, I, he's a reasonably well-educated man. He should know better. The problem, of course, is that, as Dennis Prager once said, where you have an overabundance of education and you have a whole lot of knowledge, there not necessarily is a lot of corresponding wisdom to match that knowledge. And uh, you contrast uh, his reign and, and the current Biden administration. Some would argue this is uh, Obama's third term. You contrast that with yes. the four years of Trump, the, the Abraham Accords, uh, uh, relationships being normalised between Israel and a number of Muslim-majority countries, uh, night and day. Now, before I let you go, Josh, uh, tens of thousands of pro-Palestinian, or you can call them anti-Israeli protesters, gathered in Washington uh, on the weekend, uh, they smeared red paint on the gates of the White House. They tried to scale the walls. They chanted all sorts of uh, slogans. And uh, they also desecrated monuments, covered statues in graffiti. Um, let's just have a look at the reaction of one man who uh, was there in the aftermath and was understandably sickened by what he saw. They have raised the Palestinian flag on the grounds of the White House at Lafayette Park and walk around with me. Look at this. I have, I've never been so outraged. They've raised the Palestinian flag and more graffiti. More graffiti. Look at this. Free Palestine. You see this? Free Palestine. And look at this sign. Look at this sign. Decolonize Palestine, decolonize the United States, reads the sign. Joshua, tell me about how authorities handle this uh, lawlessness. 
Well, you know, real quick, Rita, let's address that sign on its own merits or lack thereof, as the case may be, because it's very it's actually deeply illustrative. The same people that are calling Israel an apartheid state that are trying to, quote unquote, free Palestine from the river to the sea, as they say, which is, in essence, a call for the extermination of the Jews. It's a call for a second Holocaust. The same people that are calling that also want an end to the United States of America. I mean, it really is just two sides of the exact same coin. It's not an accident, of course, that in Tehran, you know, our number one arch geopolitical foe, they chant death to America and death to Israel. America is the big Satan, Israel is the little Satan. If you think that Israel is a colonizing force, ironically, as the case may be, despite the fact that the Jews were, by definition, the first inhabitants, that's why they call it Judea, where the word Jew comes from. If you think that America is a colonizing force, you probably think the exact same thing of Israel and vice versa. So oh, everything is up and, and down. It, it's, it's all just horrific there. You know, my take when I saw this happen over the weekend, Rita, was, you know, I, th I thought that we just established a precedent earlier this year when it came to J Special Counsel Jack Smith's indictments of former President Trump. You know, I, isn't this insurrectionary behavior when you're there at the White House kind of <laughs> pounding to get in, you know, you know, painting mm. in blood red the gates of the White House there? You know, I'm pretty sure when I was in law school, we learned that equal prosecution across the rule of law was one of the tenets of a just and sound rule of law. What's good for the goose has to be goose for the gander, unless, of course, you're living in a two-tier system of justice. Conservatives have been saying for many years that that is exactly what is happening before our very own eyes. And unfortunately, unless these people are prosecuted the exact same way that all the January 6 trespassers were prosecuted, and I don't think that's going to happen, Rita, but unless that happens, it's just yet another data point in this very, very long and inglorious litany of data points evincing the two-tier nature of America's current fallen system of justice.